Hey everybody, the Johnny Cage here, welcoming you back to another episode of The Game Cage. Today we're playing a game that I actually haven't spent some time with, but I really love it a lot. And it's not really a linear game, so it'd be hard to do an LP of it, so I figured I'd show it on this show. Why the heck not? We are playing River City Ransom today. And from the get-go, you choose one or two players. Message speed, slow, normal, or fast, as well as skill level being novice or advanced. I hold your city captive and Ryan's girlfriend hostage. With my gangs of students and evil bosses, nobody can stop me now. Meet my demands or else. P.S. Alex and Ryan, if you interfere, they'll be in for the fight of your lives. Slick. You'll be in for the fight of your lives. It, it doesn't matter. Alright, so the idea is that we're trying to get the guy's girlfriend back. And this is the title screen made by Technos of Japan. And here we go. Just start you right off. The controls, very basic. B kicks, A punches, and if you double tap forward, you you can uh, do a sprint, which is really neat. Throughout the game, you'll be collecting money from these guys that you can beat down with weapons or your fists or feet. And they will say something hilarious like BARF, or something that just doesn't really make any sense. It's kind of out of place. Up at the top, you have your health. If you hit select, it will bring up the amount of money you have, which will come into play later on. But right now, just gonna do some basic, beating down some bad guys. He's got Slick has got lots of students and evil bosses at his disposal, and we're about to take care of business. So the beginning, it's very simple. It lets you leans you into the game nice and easy. Let's you grab some money and go beat up some enemies. Although there is a level up system to this game of sorts that I'll be getting to very shortly. As soon as we make it to the. Uh, I guess you want to might call it a rest area. Ooh, got with a trash can. Look out for that. Oh, I should mention too, um, with the when we have a weapon equipped, you can hit A to use it. No, no, I lost it. Great. Or you can, or you can push B and throw it. And I totally missed the guy with the trash can. But I love how complex the controls are in this game for just being two buttons. You have you can dash, and you can hit, and you can throw the weapons. Oh, oh, money's gone. So after you go through a couple of screens of fighting, you'll come to a mall, and no, you cannot beat up these women. In fact, you can't do anything attack-wise when you're here. But you can go to shops, and you can buy stuff with the money that you've collected from beating up enemies. So, I don't know about you guys, but I love me some pancakes. I'm gonna get an order of pancakes, please, for $3.30. Mmm, eat the pancakes, stamina up to... Max power up 7, anything else? Nope, we'll just take off for now. So you might be saying to yourself, what does stamina and max power have to do with anything? Well, if we hit the start button, it'll take us to our menu, where we'll see belongings, which we have nothing of, but you can get food and other stuff to take along with you to use on the run, so you won't have to go to a restaurant like that to get your health back up to full. Password, which we'll get it to in a second. Uh, level, level doesn't do anything except for take you back here, and you can adjust the message speed and skill level if you wish. Status. Now this is what the game is all about here. If you want a really customizable RPG type of game for the NES, look no further than this. You can increase all of these stats as much as you want. Or I believe the cap is like 164. It's kind of an arbitrary strange number. But you can get these up really high. A lot of them speak for themselves as you can tell. Agility is your speed. Willpower is your ability to get up after you take a beating. You may have noticed the health bar up at the top. Even when that health bar becomes depleted, you can still get up if you have enough willpower. Stamina is the amount of health that you have right now. Max power is your max health. So that pretty much takes care of all that. And you eat a variety of different foods to increase those stats. And kind of the difficult part of the game is figuring out what to eat to increase whichever stat you want. Uh, and I did not show the password. And... Oh man, talk about long passwords in video games. Oh, but when you consider all of the stat increases that you can have, because this this memorizes exactly how far you are in the game, how many bosses you have, what equipment and items you have on you, and how your stats are laid out. And it's not both of those, by the way. It's only the one on the left side. If you were playing with a second player, then that uh, set of three lines on the right-hand side would be for the second player. So, as you can see there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, thirty-three characters in total for a password. Pretty ridiculous. But I guess the upside to this is that the game itself, even if you've never ever played this before, should only take you about four hours to beat. So you could beat it in one sitting if you wanted to. 
Uh, well, let's do a little bit of leveling up, and while I do some leveling up, I should mention that this game was made by Technos. And for those of you unfamiliar with Technos, they created a game that you might know a little bit better, called Double Dragon. Now, to be fair, this actually all started back in 1987 when Technos came out with a game called Renegade, which was kind of the precursor to all these uh, beat-em-up games that you have for the NES, which I guess there aren't a ton of beat-em-up games for the NES. Started with that, and then they started making these Kunio-kun games. You may have noticed these characters, they look a little similar. That's because they've been in other games by uh, Technos, in particular Crash and the Boys and um, Super Dodgeball, to name a couple. And this game came out in January of 1990, which was actually a month before, or a month after Double Dragon 2 came out. And if you ask me, Double Dragon 2 was the greatest one of all three of the Double Dragon games on the NES, just because it had two-player mode. People sometimes forget that the first Double Dragon for the NES, the NES port of it, didn't have two-player um, capability. It had a it had a dueling, like a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, but it did not have the ability to play two players in the actual game itself. So that was a major drawback, definitely for me at the time, thinking that you're going to play what was an awesome recreation of the arcade game, and then it ends up falling flat for that one reason. But so number two came out, and most people jumped on number two and kind of let this game go. And uh, understandable, Double Dragon had already built up a reputation for itself. Eventually, this game was brought over to the Game Boy Advance. Um, I want to say it was like around 2004, maybe? But I don't know if it had as much popularity there um, as it could have had. And I think this game has picked up something of a cult following nowadays. In fact, it goes for about uh, 25 to 30 bucks if you buy it retail. Let's see what the sushi, sushi guys got, huh? Cheaper sushi, please. Mmm, I love me some octopus. Not just because I like Octopus, but because it also raises my weapon stat. And I love using weapons. Stamina up, max power. Most items in the game will increase your stamina and max power. You also see a lot of them that increase your willpower. Let's go for something really expensive, shall we? Give me the expensive sushi. It's the most expensive you've got. Oh my gosh, $28 for swordfish? Why not? Let's splurge a little bit, huh? By the way, at this point in the game, you get about 50 to 75 cents per enemy you kill. As you know. Punch increased by 4, awesome, I do like punching. Throw increased by 4, strength up 4, willpower up 5, stamina up 3, max power up 21. <sighs> that is a doozy. I gotta say, that's actually pretty awesome. Most most things, especially cheaper things, will only increase like one stat by one point and maybe give you back some stamina, maybe increase max power on average. That's probably what will take you the longest in the game, is not just the fighting and collecting money, but figuring out what stat you want to increase and what you need to buy to increase that stat. Over here, we have a bookstore. This is another cool part about this game. These are all very expensive, but this lets you do superpower moves, kind of like Hadouken style, or that, uh, you know, what Billy and Jimmy Lee do, that crazy spin around in the uh, air kick move, the dragon feet. <laughs> Get it? Get it? Double dragon? Huh? Uh, but there's that. Later on, there's a sauna where you get to see some of Alex's nice 8-bit butt. Oh yeah. And as you progress through the game, you'll notice that the enemies... Well, you can go into enemy territory and fight people at their, their particular high schools. Oh gosh, as I get brutally beat up by these guys. You'll notice that their shirts change color. And you could mem bother to memorize how difficult a guy is based on the color of his shirt. Just know that the color of their shirt basically indicates the amount of money that you'll get from them. Let's see if we keep it on the money screen here, and we click something from him. Boom! Got 65 cents from that guy. But these guys are beating me down pretty hard. Might want to go back and increase some stats if you got the time. <laughs> I wouldn't advise buying that swordfish right off the bat, that's for sure. But as you can see here, pretty fun game. Really fun with two players, especially if you have an afternoon to spend. Ooh, yellow shirt guy. Ooh, their blocking's getting better. If you got an afternoon to spend with this game, Go ahead and enjoy yourself. It's a lot of fun, and you won't really be disappointed. You might not ever pick it up again, but you'll become familiar with what has become a really popular cult classic for the NES. So I think that just about does it for this episode of The Game Cage, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Next time, I will get back to my roots and be playing a game that I have never, ever played before. So if you guys have any suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. I greatly appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys next time. Later on, everyone.